just several months after starting my YouTube channel, that's kind of I'm looping back to my story. Several months after starting my YouTube channel and making quite a few videos, like say 10, 15, 20 at the time, I actually received uh, the best lecturer award from one of the courses at U of T. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and today is a very special day because I'm posting my 100th YouTube video today, and it's obviously a great anniversary and great achievement for myself, and I would like to share my joy with you, as well as the experiences of me making all these videos, preparing for making them, filming them, editing, and there are quite a few lessons that I've learned. Ironically, in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I'm planning to make a um, video about 100 lessons that I learned from 100 videos that I've made. I actually misspoke, to be honest, but uh, in a way, making each video is a lesson on its own, but obviously I don't want to bore you with like minutiae or like little details that are not that interesting, but what I would like to share with you is my main, most important, most critical revelations that I had in the process of making all these videos. So let's dive in. Okay, the very first thing I've learned about YouTube video making is that it's damn hard. And by hard, I mean that you always see people presenting something and it looks seamless, effortless, they are always jovial, they have perfect lights, they have perfect script, they have amazing uh, presentation skills. And uh, I always thought that all you need is just a camcorder or a camera and you just film yourself and post it. Turned out that it is a quite an endeavor. The very first thing, it was actually very difficult for me to start making these videos. To be absolutely honest, the very first thing I've done was buying this camcorder. And I think I bought it in like 2011 or 12. I bought it to film some adventures of mine when I was going to a shooting range. Um, I've been participating in some shooting competitions, some exercise work. And I always thought that, you know, one day I would like to start making YouTube videos. So I bought it around 2012 and only years later, I decided to actually start making YouTube videos. And it took me a while to actually get into the process of doing so. And quite honestly, if I haven't had uh, kind of contracted people to make my website, to start making blogs and YouTube vlogs, uh, I think I would have never started. So this external pressure was actually the determining factor that allowed me to start my YouTube channel. So I knew on some logical level that I really, really want to have my YouTube channel. I want to have some online presence because I got lots of things to say to people. And uh, I hired a nice company that is still making my working on my website all all these updates all the calculators check it out by the way drsamshealth.com nice plugin and uh, i hired them and the price was rather steep but it took me a couple of months to make my first youtube video i was always planning to have my youtube videos kind of uh, paired with my blogs. So I've written my first blog, which was like introduction to Dr. Sam's health. And it took me, took me around two months to actually make it happen. So I would set up my camera like this one. I didn't have lights then, I didn't have mic then. I just, all I had to do is just like put the camera and uh, stand in front of it, look more or less nicely and to make a speech. And uh, it took me so many tries to actually deliver more or less coherent speech that would be very short and it wouldn't last long. And uh, it was a huge, huge achievement for me. It was a breakthrough. And uh, I actually ended up, I realized that I cannot make a whole speech in just one go. So I had to film multiple short clips and then merge them into the in one of the video editing software which brings me to my second point so the second thing it takes a lot of skill to make a youtube video 
I never thought it would take that much. Again, I thought you just film yourself and post it on YouTube. It turns out that in my case, at least, you have to make a good script. You have to prepare well. You have to check all the information. Then you have to set up everything. You have to set up your camera, your lights, which quite honestly, I still master in this skill. Uh, I also purchased this mic, the lapel mic, and uh, I was so annoyed with this initially that I still am not using this to this day, believe it or not. And I apologize for the poor quality of my sound. A lot of people are, are making comments about that. Uh, I've got one of these shotgun mics that is pointing at me right now, and uh, it turns out that it picks up some sort of a fan noise from the camera, and uh, I'm actually making an effort to turn off all kinds of sounds around me, but that's not enough to cancel it, so I use some noise reduction in a video, video editor. And I'm trying to use this lapel mics, but from the get-go, I found it to be like a little bit problematic. First of all, it's like a long cord that goes to your camera. They have this little muffling um, foam, foamy thing that falls off all the time. Uh, then. I just made a video a couple of days ago and I realized that while I was carrying it, it was like rubbing against my shirt and it was also annoying. So just setting up all this equipment is another layer of skill and then you have to video edit and to get from, from the very beginning of my journey, I didn't know what software to use, I tried different things. I tried to research it and uh, there are so many opinions. So people are using Adobe Premiere Pro or Premiere to begin with or Final Cut. I don't have an Apple computer. Actually, I used to have a uh, MacBook Air, but at the time when I was uh, making my first video, I was looking for something that would be either cross-platform or uh, something that would work primarily on PC. And I found something that was easy to start using, uh, which was Cyberpunk. Just kidding. Cyberlink Power Director. I'm not a big fan of this software, but uh, it does allow me to do the things that I need to do in a rather easy, sim simplified fashion. So I have been using it, and actually, these days I'm trying to use Adobe Premiere Pro, and it has a pretty steep learning curve. So maybe in a while I'll switch to something else from the Cyberlink Power Director. But nevertheless, I realize it takes a lot of skill to make these videos and there are several layers of skill. Actually, just to entertain you a little bit, I remember that in like 2010s or maybe even 2000s, I've been following one of the YouTubers who was making this uh, funny videos about video games and he was always picking up some really, really shitty video games and playing them and mocking these games. And these videos were quite offensive to begin with, but uh, they were funny and most importantly, they looked like, you know, he didn't care at all. Like he just like made a video, made some comments as he went through the game, as he played and um, he just posted on YouTube. And a lot of people were offended by him and they were like posting multiple comments saying that he is a terrible person and what he does is like doesn't require any skill. And I remember him saying in one of his videos something along the lines of, uh, you know what, you think it's easy, it's an easy thing to do? Just try doing it yourself. Just make one video, post it on YouTube, and then you will criticize me. And I actually, for some reason, remember his words really well. And the irony is that right now I feel like exactly like that. I've got quite a few people who follow me. I've got some friends who follow me and they always make comments about, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Your videos are too long, your voice is too monotone, you are given too much information, too little information. And I always feel like saying, you know what, make your own and I will see how it will look like, okay? So these were my first two lessons. Lesson number three, I realized that it takes a lot of time to make a video. As I explained, it takes a lot of skill preparation, you have to have your idea, you have to write your script, you have to set up your stuff, you have to film everything and quite frankly uh, when I'm fil uh, filming my videos I always realize in the process of saying things that I'm making some sort of slight errors I can swallow 
or I can like lick my lips or I can make a small uh, grammar error and you know that English is not my first language. Sometimes I say things that I didn't intend to say or I'm not sure if my like speech cadences prosody was exactly what I was uh, intended to make. And uh, I kind of self-censor. I stop myself in the, in the middle of sentence. I try to redo this text and it usually takes me a couple of hours to actually film the material that is enough for like 15-20 minute long video. And uh, I actually made this uh, sentence or like long paragraph uh, uninterrupted and I've made quite a few errors and uh, I decided in the process that, you know what, enough is enough, I will keep it exactly the way it was. The reason for that is some sort of uh, exposure therapy for anxiety disorders. I know that I'm a psychiatrist and uh, one of the therapies for people who have certain specific phobias or fears of like specific things. Like in my case, it's not a clinical fear, but it is something that affects my functionality here is the fear of making some sort of a mistake or a grammar error or some sort of like a sound that would not sound well on video. I will keep making them and I will try in my next videos and in this video to not to uh, cut them out, not to let these things affect me because I will get to this later, but I know that nobody really cares. And this kind of naturally transitions me to the fourth lesson that I've learned pretty much about myself, which is I'm not a natural public speaker. I have made quite a few presentations in my life. And uh, interestingly enough, I remember when I was a student, medical student in my medical school, I was making annual, annually I was making presentations at the annual students conference and I was doing some research in the department of psychiatry and believe it or not, I actually have won each one of them. Every year at the annual conference, I would be making my research presentation and I would get like first place each and every time. But I remember how scary it was uh, to stand behind this tribune. And I even remember the feeling of, you know, my hands shaking, my legs shaking, and then got all this like 200 people listening to me. and. Uh, it was a, quite a challenge and, uh, you know, even remembering this stuff, I'm getting a little bit anxious. But somehow I managed to get over this here and get more comfortable in my own skin. And uh, I remember that I was always making, making an effort to not to read my slides. Sometimes people are preparing some sort of um, text that they read and that's very boring, but I was always trying to use my artistic creativity skills to actually present, to project my voice. And uh, later on, when I moved to Canada, I had to do the same stuff, but now in English. And uh, obviously it didn't help because I'm a product of different culture, though I'm trying to assimilate as much as I can with Western world. I also have to speak in, a, not in my second, but third language and uh, it takes its toll and make, kind of magnifies my insecurities. Nevertheless, I'm slowly getting over that and believe it or not, actually the fact that I'm having this YouTube channel and making all these presentations helped me tremendously. Just to give you one example, one day I remember that I have received uh, a comment. I was making a relatively regular uh, set of lectures at U of T and uh, one of the comments was that his voice is so boring that it makes me fall asleep and uh, there were quite a few other comments like that over the course of the years not that I'm taking them very lightly or uh, I take them too seriously just because you know I know what my limitations are and actually I had a major motorcycle accident and I had the damage to my jaw that actually affects the mobility of my jaw and my articulation, believe it or not, literally. Articulation is actually a medical word for the joints. And uh, I had both of my joints uh, affected by this accident significantly. Nevertheless, I know that my limitations are, you know, I do tend to be rather monotone and I should try to spice my speech up somehow. I'm trying to use my 
gestures more. I'm trying to use some jokes, sarcasm, uh, irony, all kinds of you know tools that we can use in our speeches. Obviously, when I'm making my YouTube videos, I can do things multiple times and uh, try out different things, and I can actually get a feedback from the um, little monitor that I've got next to my camera. I can see myself. Uh, also, I can when I'm editing, I can see how the light work, how the uh, you know the, the shirts fit me, how my speech goes, and so on. And just several months after starting my YouTube channel, that's kind of I'm <laughs> looping back to my story. Several months after starting my YouTube channel and making quite a few videos, like say 10, 15, 20 at the time, I actually received uh, the best lecture award from one of the courses at U of T, which was a great breakthrough for me because I knew that there was a, some sort of a significant quality improvement in terms of my uh, delivery method. And I have learned a lot. If you have if you have some time, you can check out my videos from the very beginning. You will see how different the video quality, the sound quality, the presentation quality are in comparison to what I had in the very beginning. Anyhow, the bottom line again is that I'm not a natural born speaker. I'm just a guy who is trying to make uh, these videos and it takes a huge effort to make them and it took me around two decades of my life to get to the point where where I'm more or less comfortable with making videos and uh, talking to the public. That brings me to my lesson number five, again about myself, which is on top of not being a natural born public speaker, I also have quite a few issues. Maybe you have heard that almost all doctors we have like obsessive compulsive traits, which doesn't mean that we have OCD, it simply means that we have uh, some sort of a perfectionistic traits and everything has to be perfect. So right now I'm filming this video and uh, I am constantly monitoring lots of things that are happening around me. Like there is some sort of a noise outside of my house and no matter what I... Uh, uh, it's completely out of my control. Uh, one of my neighbors started like drilling something or cutting something with a chainsaw. It's actually very annoying but I'm not gonna cut it out just because it's a perfect illustration of what what is happening in my mind another thing is like I'm looking at a monitor in front of me and I see that this side of the bookcase has a little bit more space next to it compared to the other one so the camera should be tilted slightly differently and that will annoy the hell out of me when I'll be editing my neighbor continues doing this stuff I swallowed a couple of times I am already completely uncomfortable with my own video. Nevertheless, uh, I'm working on all these issues. Plus, the process of editing my own videos actually magnifies all these little things that I cannot really fix anymore because the videos were filmed and uh, they kind of annoy me a lot. Actually, my first experience with editing was when I started to listen to my own video, to my own voice, I realized that, you know, my poor patients have to go through this. They have to listen to this guy with a thick accent, uh, boring voice. I didn't like the tone of my voice. So there is a lot of uh, emotional and psychological uh, kind of conflict that is happening inside of me. And uh, I actually think that making this video is a, in a way a therapy for myself because I'm not only getting comfortable with, uh, the, with my presentation skills and I'm not getting not only getting better with them I also am getting more comfortable with myself as a person as a human being I can analyze my mistakes sometimes I make videos and I'm quite upset with the end result because I realize that I didn't express the things that I've been working on like, well enough uh, or I could have done things better. But again, it's an exposure therapy for me and it's very thought provoking. So that's my lesson number five. Okay, the next lesson is quite unique. I position myself as a medical doctor and as a doctor, I'm not supposed to say a number of things. So first of all, I'm a psychiatrist, so I cannot use terms like crazy, psycho. Uh, I am not supposed to diagnose people, which is very easy to kind of do and kind of misconstrue. Uh, 
for example, there are lots of people talking about Donald Trump being a narcissist, right? I am not supposed to make any comments about that because even if I believe that he's a narcissist, uh, if I said something along these lines, it would mean that uh, I am making a diagnosis based on some uh, second-hand information, some video presentations, uh, without having seen this patient, without without seeing him as a patient, without getting his consent, and that would be absolutely wrong. So you see where I'm at, right? So I've got lots of things that I would like to say, but at the same time, I cannot say them because they would be highly unprofessional. And on top of that, obviously, I cannot say things like, I cannot swear, I, or at least I shouldn't swear, uh, I cannot take off my shirt to show my uh, perfectly chiseled body, uh, though I'm talking about fitness. I uh, cannot go on a rant. You know, there are lots of YouTubers who are making making their career based on the fact that they are actually ranting or venting and they are saying lots of nasty things. Uh, it's like usually for like comedic uh, purposes, but uh, realistically, I know that that is not uh, vein I can explore. So there are quite a few things that I cannot say and I'm very very limited to a very narrow spectrum of things that I, I, I'm I allowed to say. And maybe allowed is not the right word but that's how it feels to be honest. Uh, or for example I've got lots of things to say about the masks, vaccination, lockdowns and uh, quite frankly I don't think it's safe for me to uh, be like 100% open about these things. So all I can do is I can present some research evidence and discuss it. And uh, still, even if I do say uh, very appropriate things, if I choose my words, I'm afraid that some of my videos could have been um, censored by YouTube or by certain authorities. Like it happened to quite a few doctors on YouTube actually in the past. But Nevertheless, my point is that, you know, I never thought that being a medical doctor would be such a limitation in terms of what I can say. And that brings me to my penultimate point, which is there is almost always some sort of a backlash. So no matter what I say, no matter how politically correct I am, no matter how scientific and thoughtful my videos are, somebody is always saying something negative, somebody is always getting offended. Like I remember I was talking about hydroxychloroquine and um, I said that, uh, you know, it looks like, I want to believe in this drug, but it looks like it's a dead end. And uh, there was somebody who was saying that, you know, like something along the lines of a burn in hell, you call it dead end. Yeah, it's exactly that, doctor talking about death. And no, 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 just like all I mean is just a idiomatic expression that means that there is nothing to get from this drug because all the clinical trials that were conducted were either inconclusive or they showed that there is no actual benefit. And as much as I would like to have this drug in my arsenal of things that I would be using in my clinical practice, which is essentially also not true because I'm a psychiatrist, I don't really use hydroxychloroquine, but I would like to have hope that there is a medication that helps people. And it turns out that based on all these clinical trials, there is no uh, particular benefit from using it. Or I remember how I was making a video about FFMI, fat-free mass index, and uh, the whole point of the video was I have taken the uh, nice clinical research, not clinical, but you know, actual field research when people were analyzing certain things, and I did a good statistical analysis of this just to say that even somebody has a very high FFMI, their chances of being steroid user are not that high. And uh, I remember that somebody was like yelling at me effectively because they used caps lock. Cease and desist, cease and desist. You are talking about things you have no clue about. I dare you to do this kind of analysis. I dare you to do that kind of analysis. And the irony was that actually uh, this person quite frankly, didn't understand what they were talking about. Uh, and I think it was a guy, he said that, you know, I dare you to provide some sort of a probability uh, information. And it was already in the video. And I just realized that no matter what you do, no matter how carefully you prepare your material, there will be always somebody who will be offended. And it 
makes my skin a little bit harder because you know I learn how to navigate this kind of backlash and how to respond to this though obviously it's usually quite unpleasant and you are especially if you are a medical doctor you are position yourself as somebody who is providing very evidence-based very leveled uh, information when somebody attacks you viciously it feels pretty bad and my final the ultimate lesson that I learned is that nobody cares I always thought that you know we got so much misinformation there on YouTube and on the internet in general and the world needs somebody like myself a doctor who is into fitness into lifestyle modification who can bring some knowledge evidence-based information recommendations that would be honest leveled rational and uh, true and uh, I realized that I'm on such a losing end of the bargain here there are lots of people who make absolutely ridiculous claims and they're talking about different things and a lot of things that they say they're outrageous and uh, if you are like a lay person who doesn't know this stuff they present their information in such a way that you know you will believe that oh my god I have to do this I have to do that now but if you are a professional like myself a medical doctor you know like, physiology biochemistry pharmacology you will know that this is just an absolutely ridiculous advice and I thought that you know I can actually check out some myths and truth and talk about things from like perspective from my perspective medical perspective health perspective evidence-based perspective and it turns out that uh, it's uh, not that entertaining if it is done this way but nevertheless I just realized that I will still keep doing this because uh, I like making my videos I think I learn a lot in the process because in order to present something I have to do some additional research you know I might have certain ideas I might have a general understanding but sometimes I need to get in some minutia of different things and my overall knowledge level gets better I also realize that it helps with my interpersonal interactions with my uh, acad academic presentations with a number of other things I had my TEDx talk things like that so in general making these videos helped me tremendously uh, I would not refuse to have more support because I think that the things I'm talking about are actually very valid and uh, I still believe that I will never be as popular as certain fitness youtubers uh, because of number of characteristics because of my accent because of my approach which cannot be outrageous I cannot make ridiculous claims uh, without getting into trouble and that's not the reason why I'm not making them I just don't want to be dishonest and uh, that's the reality and that's the main lesson that I learned but nevertheless as I said I will keep making these videos if you want to support me please hit the like button subscribe button go through my videos leave some comments I would really appreciate it because that will make my videos more visible it will kind of uses the algorithm of YouTube just to increase the popularity of certain videos and I believe that the information that I present is actually evidence-based and totally makes sense and that's that's it for today so I'm gonna celebrate my anniversary in my own way by posting this video as always thank you so much for watching for those of you who are subscribed to my channel thank you for doing so and thank you for sticking to this channel and to me and uh, if you have any ideas please let me know what you would like me to talk about uh, maybe discuss certain things or not personalities but specific claims on YouTube uh, specific aspects of healthy living, fitness, and so on. Check out my website, drsamshealth.com, as well as my blog there. And uh, I'll be happy to see you in my next video. All the very best.